Thursday here. Reckless speculation. If if old Dex tweets can can make I'm it. Trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. Because well, we need we need old Dex tweets. Uh, old Dex uh, Dex tweets. <laughs> Is We're it Dex great. tweets? Is that your Twitter? It is Dex right? tweets. Yes, we it need is Dex tweets. Yeah, yes. okay, all right. We need old Dex tweets to uh, to give us his wild trade idea here. But uh, this uh, particular slice of reckless speculation Thursday is presented by our friends at Federated Mutual Insurance Company. They're here as a guiding hand for over a hundred years. They've been helping businesses maximize their level of success. They're all about risk management tools and resources. You can find a full list of industries Federated protects. And uh, specializes in it, federatedinsurance.com, where it's our business to protect yours. So the Wild got off to a pretty train wrecky start this year. Where they were just allowing seven goals, oh. six goals in every game. Mm-hmm. They have bounced back. They've taken care of business against some weaker opponents, but they've they've generally played a lot better. Um, so this is a safe space to mm-hmm. throw ideas out about reckless speculation. What this team could do to keep moving forward. The trade deadline is still months away. Yep. Uh but let's uh you know, let's open up the the speculative food truck here, so to speak. What do you got for us? Okay, so yes, we're still months away from the trade deadline. But, you know, let this is a safe space for us. We can we can still talk about these type of trades. In fact, other outlets are talking about this as well. Uh let's go to Bleacher Report here. We already have top trade landing spots for Canuck Center Bo Horvat. Hmm. So the reckless speculation has already started, not from just Score North, but from Bleacher Report too. And by the way, Bleacher Report has really embraced more of their hockey coverage. I think some people, sometimes people hear Bleacher Report as just, oh, they're just classic clickbait, click, 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 click. No, they have actually a really cool hockey section. I think it's a Bleacher Report open ice where they, they do deep dives into cool hockey things. It's really good stuff. So they have five landing spots uh, for Bo Horvat, the Canucks center, who is a very good offensive center, uh, wins a lot of face-offs. He's a beast on the power play. He is a UFA at the end of the year. The Canucks are off to a really bad start, so looks like they'll probably be sellers at the deadline. I'd be pretty shocked, unless they turn things around. I don't know if Boudreaux will do that, but it looks like the Canucks probably tracking to being a seller by the time the deadline rolls around in March. So five landing spots for Bo Horvat. You got the Carolina Hurricanes. They could be a spot. Detroit Red Wings are listed on here. The Islanders are listed on here. The Ottawa Senators, who are a little bit more peskier uh, and, and could actually turn some things around. And also, the Minnesota Wild are on this list. Reckless speculation. Uh, yep. Yep. Uh. Uh, so, brief little write-up here from the Wild's perspective. So, the Wild obviously enjoyed a 113-point performance last season. Even though they're off to a shaky start, they have plenty of time to regain their footing. Um, the depth at center, though, remains the Wild's biggest issue, as it's touched on in this article. Ryan Hartman, who was the Wild's top-line center last year, is now playing third-line wing. He's not even playing center. He's been playing wing, and now he is on the injured reserve because uh, he, I believe, tore his shoulder trying to drop the gloves. So, again, great hockey fight because now you lost a player because he dropped the gloves. Like, one punch in, he dro- He like separated his shoulder, too, by the way. <laughs> that would be me. Yes. Just uh, or me. getting out over my skis and just yes. tearing my labrum trying to throw a haymaker. <laughs> so your top line center from last season, who was playing wing, is now on the IR. Right now you have Frederick Goudreau, who, God bless him, is a great defensive checking line center, but probably should have no business being the top line center on a team with deep playoff aspirations. Now, Marco Rossi is someone, too, that probably it, they want him to be the top-line center, and he looked really good on Tuesday for the first time this season. He's kind of been more of a passenger. He had a point. He almost got his first goal. But um, regardless, they're still baking him, if you will. They're, they're still wanting him to get his feet, feet wet before they probably give him the keys to the Cadillac. So this is where Bo Horvat comes into play for the Wild. So the Wild have a projected cap space of $14.4 million at the trade deadline. So the trade deadline cap space kind of expands as you get closer to the as you get to the deadline and on because you can put players on long-term injury reserve that kind of resets the cap a little bit. The Lightning did this two years ago with Kucherov where he didn't and play And then did game. the player come, didn't he come back yes. for the playoffs? So the salary cap does not apply once the playoffs start. So you can, but you can pull you a guy off ca- injured reserve. Yes, yes. Okay. You, you don't have to be cap compliant when the postseason starts, which is kind of really weird and dumb. 
But that's how the Lightning got away with that. Last year, the Vegas Golden Knights were almost going to get away with that. They actually ended up not making the playoffs, but they had a lot of players on high cap hits. They were shuffling the long-term injury reserve. You can kind of push this money a little bit around, and then the playoffs can come, Mm. and you can kind of absorb a little bit more cap space, if you will. So in terms of the, the cost to get him, and the Bleacher Report mentions this, that Garen is probably unwilling to move his first round pick this year because he just parted with a third rounder from last year's trade deadline. But you could probably talk the Canucks into taking the 2024 first rounder. So two drafts from now, you could potentially move that first round pick. Um, now, I don't think it would just be a draft pick and that's it. Cause Bo Horvat's, like I said, a very good offensive playmaking center. Um, he won't come cheap either. They recommend throwing in someone either in Kalen Addison or Brock Faber who are two defensemen. Uh, Addison, who is who is looking pretty good, and I'm not willing to move that guy. Brock Faber, who is the Gophers, I believe captain this year, right, Judd? I think he's the captain of the Gopher hockey captain, team. Yeah. Um, and he signed with the Wild. It, he, it's very likely that once this college hockey season ends, Faber will jump ship. He'll probably join the Wild. I don't know if he'll be a regular contributor with the big club right away, but they have high hopes for him as well. So I'm probably more willing to deal a Brock Faber then I am a Kalen Addison because I know the known commodity there in Kalen Addison where Brock Faber could just be a really good college hockey player that doesn't pan out, which is hmm. odds are that's probably going to be his future. But I do think it will take more than a first round pick and probably one of those two defensemen. The issue with the Wild, though, in my opinion, is so Matt Dumba is a UFA at the end of this year. He's making six million. He's just not the player he was um, since the Kachuk injury from four years ago. And he also got into a fight. And even though he's going to go into a UFA year for the first time in his career, I don't see a team paying him north of $6 million again. Like, he'll still make a, I think he'd get a multi-year contract for sure. But him having a ceiling of a $6 million cap hit beyond this season, whether it's with the Wild or another NHL team, I don't think that's going to be the case. I, I think he'll sign a multi-year deal probably in the 4 to $5 million AAV range. So can you convince Vancouver to take on Dumba, which they could also still build around. They could still use Matt Dumba for the long term if they wanted to get into contract negotiations with him. Horvat, Horvat's problem is, is he's going to he's gonna command top dollars. Like He's coming off a very good season, and he's going to get a bigger contract this summer than Matt Dumba certainly will. So you might be able to give Vancouver a much more controlled asset in Matt Dumba that you can still have to lock up and the Wild would get Bo Horvat with Garen knowing that, hey, I'm not just acquiring this guy to be a rental, and I won't mortgage future assets to acquire a rental. You'd get Horvat here with the idea that I'm going to sign this guy also long-term. Whether it's before the UFA period starts or when he first gets here and he signs a contract extension, that could still 100% be in play. But I think that's what it probably costs, a 2024 first-round pick, maybe a sweetener prospect in Addison or Brock Faber, But honestly, what I would try to do is I would try to pawn them off Matt Dumba. Of course, I'm pulling stuff out of midair here, but I'd try to pull them off Matt Dumba knowing that you're probably going to get Dumba locked into a much more team-friendly deal than what you're going to have to play uh, Hmm. uh, uh, Horvat, Bo Horvat. Dumba might be cooked. They're not going to take him. I, I, he has lost it. Like, he is, his level of play is just atrocious for the most part. And here's the problem, too. I think he's lost his shot. So, So he hurt his shoulder, and his shot... Like, two, three years back, he had a howitzer, which was his calling card, and it's gone. Uh, Yeah, I think they would want a first-round pick. I think they would want Faber and potentially another prospect that's not as good. The problem with Faber is, and he's the the guy that, of course, does play for the Gophers, but they got him from the Kings in the Fiala trade, is I think he is seen as an immediate replacement. Because if you go through the, the defensive depth chart right now, um, John Merrill's not long for this team. Yeah. Dumba's not long for this team. Go Addison, on. I think Addison, yeah, go, yeah, the goose. The goose hasn't played since its 1,000th game. And by the way, I'm really glad you got him to 1,000 games for a special night while actually hemorrhaging goals. Great job, Billy. I love you, but what the hell are we doing here? Um, but um, fa- trading, fa- I, you know, I don't know that the timing is going to be right to make this trade, but the name certainly is attractive. And I will say this. As the deadline approaches, you're going to have some very interesting players being shopped, some high-profile names. Horvat, because I think Boudreaux probably gets fired here soon. The only thing is if the Canucks then, if once Bruce is gone, they do what they did with Bruce last year, right? Which is, oh, hey, our coach is gone, and start to just get tons of points. Um, 
I think the Blackhawks are almost certainly going to trade Patrick Kane, and I think if they can, they'll trade Taze as well. So the market's going to be flooded with some pretty big names. Yeah. Uh, but I do love the idea, and I will always love this, um, because Dex is exactly right. This team is woefully, woefully short when it comes to to what I would consider respectable centers. It's going to change with prospects, but as we're seeing with Marco right now, like that's not Phil. That's not an immediate. Hey, it's fixed. This, you know, it takes time. Mm-hmm. And 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 Dean wants to develop the, these guys in a certain way. So I love the idea. I just don't know if they're going to be willing to pay the price mm-hmm. uh, for a guy like Horvat. And I don't think you can pawn Dumb off because I think the film is so ugly. Does it give you guys pause that? You're buying high on Horvat's career goal scoring season last year and a ridiculous hot start in which he scored eight goals in the first ten games. Not like the trade wouldn't happen tomorrow. Right. So he he might cool off a little bit. But I mean you're like like as we're having this discussion right now, this is the best he's ever been in like eight years in the NHL as a goal scorer. Yeah. Has he reached a new level as a goal scorer? Or is it, is it just like an inflection point? And, you know, and he, and he's gonna and he's gonna go back to being a good player, but it just feels like this is as high as his value has probably ever been uh, as a goal scorer. And you're talking about maybe having to give up something extra by buying him at his peak. You know? Yeah, and and that's the issue that they're gonna have to run into because even this summer, Horvat will be a free agent. Dylan Larkin, who if Detroit doesn't sign, is foolish. I mean that that, that that would be the guy. I mean that's the crown jewel if he if he if he reaches free agency. Um, but yeah, I think you, that's, that's the price of poker. That's the price of doing business that if you're going to go out and get someone like Horvat, that you have to pay a, a deep penny. And that's where I think Bill, if he would only do that, knowing that I have a good chance and I have communication with them, that I'm going to lock you up here. Now, is that, what does that contract look like to Phil's point? And is, if it's, if it's a 7 million AAV, which it probably will be near that, um, does he go on a decline by year two or three of a five year contract? And then you're stuck with it. Now, the good news is in the NHL side, it sounds like, and Gary Bettman alluded to this at the beginning of the season, the, the NHL might be able to pay off their escrow from the COVID seasons or from, or from when, when COVID started, which means the salary cap actually might go up starting next season by $4 million, which I know doesn't sound like a lot, but for the NHL, that is actually a significant number because they had basically locked into this salary cap spot when COVID happened, but they might be paying off this escrow faster than anticipated so they could actually have teams could have more cap space starting immediately next summer, which would help all the teams and especially the wild. We have about two more years, hefty buyouts of Parisi and Suter that are hurting against them. So it's a possibility, but I, I think it'd be worth it. He would be the exact top line center that this team has never ever really had. And it would be perfect between Kaprizov and Zuccarello. Reckless speculation. The other thing, too, so I, I believe that there is uh, three years of cap hell left. And the penalties, like the next two, are, are harsh. It's yeah. cap hell. Oh, it's absolutely hell. Uh, the other thing to keep in, in mind, too, as far as the long play goes here with reckless speculation is this. Uh, Kaprizov is signed through 2025-26 and is absolutely going to break the bleeping bank when that contract is up. Um, and so that's going to at least play a role in thinking. Uh, by that point in time, though, the cap hits will will be pretty much gone. And plus, you know, eventually the cap is just going to start to rise. Now, this is the problem. I always thought it was going to rise by a lot. And so did the Wild the day that they signed Parisi and Suter, and it didn't. Um, but all of that being said, you know, we, we talked about this a lot. I think it was last hockey season as well. The center position to me is like starting pitching in baseball. It's hard to find guys. Mm-hmm. It's like the aces. They're, not every team has, oh, man, you know, and when it, it's indicative of, of how tough it, it is to find guys when you are desperate enough to slot in Freddie Goudreau there because he is defensively responsible. The other problem with Goudreau and Hartman actually, Hartman's year last year was fantastic. It, it was probably Case Keenum 2017. The issue with Freddie is, and he has attributes, when you put him with skill guys for too long, he starts to think he's good. Um, and so you'll have games. They the, the game that they played against Detroit was a prime example. He's trying to make plays with those guys. It's like, dude, no, 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 no. You are a worker bee with two, you know, players sent directly from heaven. Don't don't do that. So 
it would be really nice to find what what at least could be considered sort of a borderline ace guy at that position. I, for now, keep saying this. Play Rossi there. Give him a chance. His confidence goes through the roof. Dean Everson was a worker bee. Really good one. Like, he worked his ass off. But I feel like he's holding Rossi accountable to a point of, like, you have to learn how to do this. If you saw when when uh, Rossi ended up on the ice a couple nights ago with Kaprizov and they scored together, Kaprizov scored the goal, Rossi's confidence went through the yeah. roof. It was like, because oh, skill, skill sharpens skill. Mm -hmm. And so I get being de defensively responsible. I get that you're going to make some dumb mistakes. But Marco Rossi, to me, that game was exactly what I've been talking about. The first part of that game working but his head sort of hung he's working with guys that are yeah. worker bees right he ends up on the ice with Kaprizov the rest of the the rest of the game it's like yeah. a different player yep skill sharp and skill yeah a lot so Speculation. we're just getting out in front just getting out in front of this nothing's gonna happen nice fine though that's that that's a nice fine bleach your report there yeah we're there hey. too hey we did uh, the same thing with flurry too we were talking about flurry in december were, of last year yes i we think were, you were the I'll first just, to mention hey. it Hey, hey. And you were made, and you were mocked. Mocked. Well, I've been mocked for a lot of bad trade ideas from the wild before. But but that one, that one was right. Okay. You nailed that, that one. one for I sure. I nailed that yeah. one. I'm right. I struck out on a lot I, of them. I know you guys were asking if if old Macadac put together some potential D'Angelo Russell trade scenarios. That's he will right. workshop oh. some. Okay. I want some I want something from you. He will workshop a few things here. Yeah. And and we'll you know give D'Lo a couple more games to to see what he can do. But I'm kinda Dude, it's been we're we're ten percent of the way into the season. You haven't joined the party yet, so the the consistency is the thing that we need. And you starting off inconsistent for the first ten percent negates the consistency. So I will start workshopping trades to make the Timberwolves better for sometime maybe next week. I love it. What what's your feeling on the rest of the Western Conference now that that we've seen a few weeks of games? Um, there's a couple teams that are definitely way feistier than thought. Portland, for sure, yeah, especially Portland's if Dame can play 60 games. Uh, the Pelicans, oh, my God, they lost a ridiculous heartbreaker last night. I don't know if you guys saw. I saw the shot. They were up by three points. They were up by three points and shooting free throws with 1.5 seconds left. They missed both free throws. LeBron gets a rebound, instant timeout. They inbound the ball at half court. Cross-court pass. Over for a three pointer with 1.4 seconds left to send it to overtime, and then the Lakers won in overtime. But the Pelicans, oh. outside of like a, a completely impossible loss last night, and then uh, Utah, man, Utah yeah. is I don't know that Utah is going to be like a 50 win team or anything, but Utah is more it has a bunch of professional basketball players, and the, the drop off there won't be as steep as advertised. So you got to be a little careful. Navigating through the Western Conference more so than maybe people thought on paper. That's okay. my, that's what I'm learning here. While also trying to figure out your own lineup combinations and things like that. Um, for today's Minnesota goodbye, the Powerball is at 1.5 billion dollars. It's got to be close to a record. Have we had like a, have we had a two billion dollar Powerball before? I don't know. It's a good question. It's getting pretty high. Getting pretty high. Um. I have two questions for you. Question number one, if you won the Powerball, how many people would you tell? Would you yeah. tell as many? Would you tell the world? Or would you try and keep it as under wraps as possible? I personally would want to not tell a ton of people, but I can assure you Dawn would put it on Facebook instantly. <laughs> <laughs> so it would be out. I, like she oh tells, God. she puts stuff on Facebook. And it's I'm all like, in a massive shed right behind our yep, house. So yep. if anyone 1. wants to come and see what one point five, well, seven hundred fifty million after taxes looks yeah. like, yeah, <laughs> it's sitting in our piece of crap garage. Um, but I would personally, I think I would try to. I mean, now I don't promise I could do it, but I think my inclination would be to hang low because I don't think it helps you to have the world know that. Yeah, I think I mean obviously you'd probably I mean you'd probably get a nice nice new house or something somewhere so it'd be like oh interesting. Oh, you, these guys live in a 8,000 square foot house now yeah. that that they that they bought for 10 million dollars or something. But I think I would try to keep it as quiet as possible too. Yeah, I would try, but I don't know if it's possible either. Yeah. Like even um <clears throat> I have a like a, gr a group 
group Slack chat with a bunch of my high school friends, and they were talking about it last night, and they s- and one of my friends said, if I won it, I would give each of you 500000 which we said only 500000 that's all you would give us. But um, but I wouldn't want a lot of people to know, because then, yeah, the word of mouth, it could be dangerous, man. In fact, you, people would come after you if you won that Powerball. And then my second question is, what are the first two or three things you would do with your oh, new financial situation? God. I would probably buy, now at my age, I would probably buy real estate, uh, event, like I would probably buy, I would probably buy a bigger house, but I do like my house. Like I'm very comfortable here, but I could get someone then to clean this house up. I, I, I don't, the, the thought of, of actually cleaning up a house. You, did you been, just say you could probably get someone to yeah, clean no, I your house after I you could, won the Powerball? But I've been here for 22 years. There's a lot here. You just won the Powerball. Congratulations, Judd. What are you, uh, what are you going to yeah. do? Oh, I'm going to probably get someone to vacuum our living room. Yeah. 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 No, but I mean, I'm talking about like, going through oh, the, 50 bucks. That's a little Judd here for Minnesota made company. Yeah. So I would, so here's what I would do. I would okay. buy, I would probably buy a bigger house in the, in the cities here, but I wouldn't move a long ways out too. So just to be clear, like I ain't buying an Orno. Um, <laughs> What's wrong with Orno? It's too far away. I like being from, near from the like cities. the stadiums and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I like being. No, yeah. it's great. I'm saying Western I would like a bigger up. house in the wow. Western suburbs. You guys, I'm taking shots. No, I have no problem doing that. I loathe the Western suburbs. Oh, see, I, I love them. So I loathe Northern Minnesota and the Western suburbs. Yeah, why, why do you? Why do you? Just loathe... alienating our audience. Uh, left. I, right. probably... I, I have no problem. People that live out there, personally, I'm not going to live out there. I am oh, okay. far away from everything. I would buy. No, it's not. Lakeville's too far from me. The to Western, but Edina I have and Minnetonka to drive. are not from, far. Like, but like, if I have to drive it's every nice day, nice to be far away from things. You can just like have your well, own. Yeah, you grew up in Buffalo. That's true. It was great. If I have to drive on three ninety four every day, Ugh. I'm I'm just gonna. I can't do it. Every time I'm every time I drive, if I am even just coming back on three ninety four, love low. Get a three ninety four, dude. You, you got to get the pass. 394 into Ugh, my van. 394 worst. is as easy as it gets. 35 oh, W is the pain in the ass Ugh. sometimes. 94. Yeah, oh. the North South bottlenecks. Oh, yes. No, 394, Declan. You don't you don't you haven't <laughs> done it e- enough and if you have the same land pass it's great. Okay, so three things. <laughs> Bit bigger house probably Edina or Minnetonka. <laughs> a brownstone in Manhattan. I want okay. I I want a place there. Yeah. Um those are my two big things. I, I wouldn't like. I wouldn't buy a lot more than that, though. I think uh, I, I would. I would for sure. I I no longer want to sit middle seat on Delta. Yeah, I'm I'm flying private for the rest of my yes, life. Yes, that's that's on my Great list. Call. Just just walk Great right call. in. Love it. You know, just kick your feet up. I'm flying, and anyone who wants to come with, we're flying private. It's going to be great. Don't worry about it. And then I would I would love someone to just cook every single meal. As healthy oh, as chef. as healthy and chef. great as possible. Okay. Okay. I would have a personal chef. I wouldn't do that, but yeah, that's for good. three meals a day, it'd be great, mm-hmm. and that's don't have to one. worry about going to the grocery store. Or nothing. Just, just, just come on. I like the grocery store. You can still go if you, you want. Can still go. No, but I don't want a chef. I like the grocery store. I like going to get my groceries. I like no. Don does. It's great. Um, <laughs> no. Just... No chef. But you might want I... to get her opinion on this. <laughs> she likes to cook. Oh, she loves to cook. She likes to cook a lot. Does she like to cook She's after good at it and she enjoys it. dollars? <laughs> yeah. She enjoys it. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. What, what a, one of my main ones is if, like, in terms of the cook one, because I don't know if I want to, like, I, I've, I'm not opposed to it, but one of my, like, perks of that, if I had one, is I love a blueberry muffin. It's my favorite muffin. I think it's the best of all muffins. Hot take. Yeah. I, the blueberry muffin is the best muffin. Our neighbors made some blueberry muffins for us a few weeks back. I'm, I'm with you, dude. Muffins They're- are so bad for you, though. Like they are so bad for you. Don't eat d- d- Dex with that heart. Don't eat too many muffins. No, that's does, fine. Does anyone go in thinking like I'm going to eat this muffin because it's opti- It's an optimal health decision. Though. I used to think they were healthy. I thought <laughs> it's, a, yeah, it's a bunch of collection of bread. It looks pretty healthy um, to me. Terribly but wrong. I would have Terribly. if I was a one the if I won the Powerball if I was a millionaire I would have a fresh blueberry muffin every single morning to start my day. Every single day. I want a fresh prepared by a chef? blueberry like muffin. What? Yeah, like prepared by pre- yeah, prepared by a chef. <laughs> he bakes like only Davis. only bakes one every it morning. It sounds like a curve. Just one. Yeah. Just one. Yes, it is a curve. It, it is a curve. It sounds like situation. a curve. You're enthusiastic. I just want one. I just want I just one. Want I want my blueberry muffin. Yeah, well, I'm going to do it the other 11. I'm Declan, throwing you're out. such an a-hole. Wait, is this, was this muffin made yesterday? 
Oh uh, yeah, I made a batch. No, I I need them to oh, be no. ev to every be single day. I need a new uh, a new muffin. Okay. All right. So Judd's basically just gonna do the same thing. <laughs> oh. He's just gonna have a, he's gonna have a, a, Hold on a, a Manhattan high rise. I got a new and thought a and a vacuumed living room. I got one more. I got one more, and I'm serious about it. Okay. So I would also invest in the wild as a partner. Yeah, I would. I would one hundred percent buy a team. Because not to buy the team, but I want some say. And, and it, <laughs> in our current jobs now, like I, I could just sit and buy a suite. Yeah. Oh, I would I, buy a team or a stake in a team. I, I'd like to buy a stake in the team, and I would get a suite at if I won. I would get a suite at the Wild. I would get a suite at the Vikings, probably. Um, I thought you said you were gonna. I thought you said maybe you'd. You'd buy the Timberwolves and move them to Vegas or something. But so I'm glad Seattle. you're keeping oh, Seattle. Seattle. No, no, no. And but but here's what I'm not doing. I am not investing a penny in in anything inside Target Center. Oh yeah, that's smart. That's a smart investing right there. Yeah. But I mean, I'm not going to get a suite there. The suites. I, I mean, they've redone them. They're better. But I'm not investing in that. Judd yeah, would buy the Dallas Stars back just to fold them for taking them away. I think I think that's what Judd would also do. <laughs> Ooh, that's, that's... I feel like that's kind of what Elon Musk is doing with Twitter right yeah. now. I'm going to yeah. buy Twitter for forty four billion dollars and just like troll it and yes. fire Did I see people. A report and... he's going to fire like <laughs> half the staff on Friday. Yes, Luke Bloomberg reported that. Yes. So what the hell are they going to do? I legitimately I love Twitter so much. Serious question. Yeah. And yep. for sports fans, like I know that Twitter's not among the two or three biggest social media platforms anymore. But for sports fans, it is the platform. Yes. So as long as he doesn't screw up Twitter to the point where sports Twitter, it, sports Twitter just disintegrates because you can't, it, you can't just like be on Instagram and be on no. TikTok it's, in the same way that you can be on Twitter during Twitter. a live event. Yes, my my girlfriend claims I date Twitter first and her second. She hates how much I'm on Twitter. Oh, I'm married All the to time. Twitter. Yeah. Dawn's great, but Twitter's outstanding. Yeah, I love Twitter. <laughs> Really? <laughs> Don's a pip. I mean, I, I love her, death, but I mean, Twitter, Twitter is life changing. Yeah. Well, hopefully uh, thoughts and prayers with Judd that he can find someone to vacuum his living room. If he wins the Powerball, I if anyone has any recommendations up. for a cleaner, you I know, if I would along. just tear my house down and just build a bigger one though. I could do that and just stay here. You could also buy your neighbors out and then just buy a house across two lots yeah. or something. Nah, yeah, St. Louis Park wouldn't, I think they would object. To that big of a house, money. a tear down. But if I did a tear down and built and built a new McMansion, I think if you paid off uh, city council, I think they would look the other way. There's just a giant mansion. By the way, on by Judd's the way, <laughs> guess guess who got a ahead of the voting game yesterday? That's oh, right. Good for you. That's right. I was already out vote. Don and I went yesterday. It was great. No line. No nothing. I heard Judd wrote Jesse Ventura in for every single vote. Well, let me tell you something, Mackie. <laughs> I wrote in, uh, yeah, no, nope, Kevin O'Connell. Just okay. wrote him in. <laughs> Crazy KOC, and O'Connell. All the way. All the way. <laughs> All right, that's your Reckless Speculation Thursday. We will uh, catch you guys Reckless Speculation. for a Feedback Friday tomorrow. See you.